So again, we have a couple of different guides. Here is a guide that's set at 132.5 millimeters of inclination. Why is that? Because the, the range of inclination is from a 125 to a 140, and this sits right in the middle. So what we can do is find the bicipital groove, go just behind it with the guide pin. We'll lean off of our retractor so we can get it there. And then this can go down the humerus and identify our intermedullary canal. And this also, if you're not sure, you can look at your cut that you're about ready to perform, and you can see that our marking from our bovi actually is pretty accurate to where exactly where we wanted to be. So that's another thing that can help you. Furthermore, this guy does have a couple of, of holes here to put in some outriggers or some pins, which will help us with our version. And we have one at 20 degrees and another at 40 degrees, and the humerus will sit in between that. And again, we can just analyze that looking at our pins and see where they're coming out with the humerus to identify that we're in a good position. So there is, this is an intermedullary base guide. There's an extramedullary base guide, which is this guide right here. So if you feel you see the humerus well, you can dial this into the position that you would like. And again, this will allow you to put two pins across and then put a cutting surface. So right here we see we have about a 135 inclination our cut, which looks pretty good for this patient. So there's uh, three different guides available, and those are two of them which can help you perform that procedure. But again, most of the time I do this by freehand. So we'll take the saw. We'll uh, place our saw on our proposed cut, and then we'll make our resection, making sure that we can identify where the rotator cuff is at proximally. We can check and make sure that we have some uh, remaining posteriorly and that all looks very good for us. This is also another time to look at the actual humerus. You'll see that there's a white thickened line of the cortex and we want to make sure that there's no bone beyond that white thick line uh, because that would be considered primarily osteophyte. And that gives us a true understanding of what the actual humeral head is. By looking at this we'll estimate it's about a 44 so we'll take a 44 humeral head Oftentimes you can use the head to help you to match up with your 44, but it can be deformed and irregular. So the more consistent measurement is directly off your cut surface, and we can put this in place and identify whether this is correct. So there's a 44. We'll take a 46 and see if that looks any better for us. And we'll see how this lines up. And honestly, looking at this, the 46 is the better match for this patient and lines up very well. So you can see how nicely that is. We'll take that patient's cut humeral head and you can see that it matches up well on that cut surface, but look how much deformity the ears are flattening. So you can't define exactly how thick the humeral head should be. But that's not a bad thing because we know that the humeral head has a relationship between head height and radius of curvature of 0.75. And so this is a fixed relationship. So if that is your diameter, then that should be your height, and that will match up with this patient's normal anatomy. So we're in good shape with that. We're now going to identify the center of the, uh, the humeral canal. The bicipital groove you see is the top here. You can also look at this cut surface and go to the most superior aspect of that and put our, our actual reamer right in place and let it find its way down the canal. So that's our first one, which is size five. And then now we're using the, the apex system. And the apex is a short stem uh, system that allows us to get excellent fixation, but not need to put a large uh, length of metal all the way down the humeral canal. So we, we know from lots of cases now that the short stem devices work extremely well and loosening has not been an issue. So we'll put this again down our canal just in the position that we originally identified. And then we'll take the next one, which is a size seven. And that's all we need to do. The rest can be done with the brooches. So now we'll take our, our broaching device and to make this work, we're gonna relax a little on our rotator cuff and put it here. We're gonna push in on our humerus and get a nice exposure to our proximal humerus as you see here. Thank you, we have a six. So this will go down into the prepared center of the canal and then we use the outriggers on this device. This is just separated, so this is a dovetail slot that allows this guide to sit over the top so that when you put your humeral brooch 
down the canal, you can hold on to the inclination that you've already developed based on your cut surface. And we'll take a mallet and we'll tap that down. And we'll go just so we can see a little bit there. Great. And we just want to follow that path straight on down. Usually the first one, of course, is the most difficult, the first one and the last one. The first one sort of prepares the canal. Now, we know from her opposite shoulder that she was a six, so that may be all that we get on this side too, so we have to be a little careful not to overpower her humeral bone. And you can see that we're rotating just a little bit. We'll try to get that back. Hold that tightly like this. And then we'll proceed on down. Again, I'm holding the outrigger directly onto the humerus so we keep that inclination a good spot. Now, where we're aiming for, if you look at this guide system, there's uh, markings that show us the 140 to the 125, and there's a hinge point right here, a little divot or dimple, and that's what needs to go down to the cut surface of the bone. So again, just to maintain our alignment with the version and inclination, we'll keep that outrigger over the top, and we'll keep approaching till we get to that dimple in the brooch. We'll take this off just so we can check. We'll look here and we can see that the small dimple is down to the level of the bone and if we look at the lines on here we see one line, two line, so we are right in between a 135 and a 130 matching this patient's anatomy but also right in the center of normative data for human uh, inclination on the humerus. Once the implant is seated, we've checked our inclination. We now want to check for rotational stability of the implant. And so if we rotate this back and forth and we see new mo no movement between the humerus uh, and the implant, then we can, we can identify this as a nice stable implant. So we could probably go up to a size seven, but it's unnecessary. So we'll stay with the size six, which seems nice and secure and is seated well. We'll take this out, and now what we'd like to do is uh, we'll, we'll let our, the circulating nurse know that we've decided that the size of the humeral head is a 46. The size of the stem going down the humerus is a size 6, so they can work on getting those implants into the room at a timely fashion.